The 100 billion euro bill is Britain's exit charge for leaving the EU. It ranges from the pension costs of British civil servants who've been to Brussels for maybe up to 40 years, to the money that's been allocated in the EU budget, but not spent yet. So Britain has committed to spending that money, but it's not yet been spent. And then much more contentious issues, such as contingent liabilities of the European Investment Bank. But remember, there's also assets. So the 100 billion is a gross figure, and when you net off the assets that Britain could claim back from the EU, it comes down to figures closer to 55 to 75 billion euros. That's about, let's say here, round number 50 billion pounds. 50 billion pounds is an enormous number to you or me. It's 50 with their nine noughts at the end of it. But compared with the British economy, it's actually not that big. It's about 2.5% of the annual amount of money that Britain makes every year. So when you think about our debt, our national debt, what the British taxpayer owes in total, that's about 83% of our national economy. Add 2.5% to that, about 85.5%. It's not a big increase. And if you think about the financial crisis, British national debt was 37% of national income before the crisis, went up to 80%, more than doubled. This is very, very small in comparison. It's clear that the £50 billion exit bill is a contentious issue. Britain will not agree to every aspect of it. But it's actually small compared with other things in Britain's finances which are much more important. If we get a good deal with the EU, then our economy might not be much worse off after leaving the EU. If we get a bad deal, those bills will be much more important because they will hit tax revenues. The Institute for Fiscal Studies said 20 to 40 billion pounds a year if we don't get a good deal with the EU. So those are potentially much bigger costs for Britain than the bill itself.